Morning everybody. Um, what we're going to have a go at doing this time round is uh, we're going to have a go at a butterfly on a flower, um, but this time working in coloured pencil. Now I know that a lot of you may never have worked in coloured pencil before, so um, I'm just going to go through a few basics. Uh, the coloured pencils that I have lots of different makes. Any colour pencils you have you can work with and you can mix different makes together but if you're looking to get some colour pencils these are the ones that I think are a good all-rounder. They're uh, by Derwent and they're called Colour Soft and they have very rich pigment which means it's easy to layer up colour and uh, they are exactly what they say, they're quite soft to work with. It does mean that you have to keep stopping to sharpen them up but the colours are really excellent. Um, you don't have to have a large set of colours, you can get colours ranging from boxes of 12, 24, 36, 72, um, up to, uh, well, I think it's about 130, something like that. Um, but I would recommend, if you can afford to do it, to get a set of 24 colours. And the paper that I'm going to work on, you will get the best results from a smooth paper, but a heavy paper. So a heavyweight cartridge paper. Um, cartridge stroke drawing paper. I use the, the heaviest I can buy is 220 gram. If you work on a watercolour paper you will find the texture of the paper will come through and you won't be able to build up any detail. However if you do have a hot pressed watercolour paper, the type of paper you usually use for uh, working on botanical paintings, you would be able to use those. Now a couple of basic techniques. Uh, actually, if I put quite a strong colour down, this is a bright orange. It's all down to the pressure of the colour, so I'm just going to show a few basic techniques. I tend to hold the pencil halfway down so that I don't put too much pressure on. So if you just are very, very light with your colour, you're obviously going to get a pale shade and gradually increase the pressure until you're putting quite a heavy pressure down and then you get a really rich colour. So you can grade your colours, even though you may have only a very small selection. So that's one thing to think about, the pressure of the pencil. Another technique that uh, we use, we mix our colours on the page. So I'm going to put a basic pale yellow down. I also do a lot of shading over large areas with the flat side of the pencil. So if I put a pale yellow down, I hope that can come out quite well on the picture, I can then mix other colours. So if you wanted a, a paler orange, you would then take your stronger colour over the top. You can also go back again with the yellow on top of that and blend it in. Okay. So you build up colour by layering. If I was then to introduce something different, so a pale green, light green, I can then bring that in over the top and alter the shade again. So you layer up and change your colours in that way. We're mixing our colours on the page, so that's how you can get away with having a relatively small selection of colours. Another technique I'm going to show you is an indenting technique. So if you've got areas, and I'm going to do two ways, show you two ways, so I'll put a basic yellow down, and then this is a, a proper indenting tool. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little small ball on one end and a larger ball on the other and they are for putting an impression into the paper. Now if you were going to use this technique and I'll show you later on how you can use it on the butterfly or petals or leaves, um, you need to take your paper out of the pad and put it onto the back of the pad because otherwise you will indent through onto the next page. So what I'm going to do is I'm then going to press with my indenting tool and I'll just put a, a line. So we're putting enough pressure on there that you're pushing the paper in. Then when I shade over the top with a colour at a slightly oblique angle, you can see that impression has come through. And obviously the deeper the colour that I put over the top, the more obvious my indentations become. So this is how you can get fine details of pale colours. So I put a pale yellow down first, so my lines are pale yellow. If you wanted a white, you would indent straight onto the paper, whatever lines that you need, and then you would shade over the top and your lines would be white. 
Okay, so we will use that technique later on. Um, there are other textures that you can build up with coloured pencils. So if you put a selection of harmonious colours together, and it is literally called a scribbling technique, I'll start with the palest colour first, and if you are trying to put a background or build up textures, it's all about the mark making. So if I do a little patch of the uh, yellow, and then go over the top with my orange, and literally scribble with the point of the pencil, and keep building up, I can go darker still with my red, and gradually, the more of the uh, scribbling that you do, go back to my yellow, the texture will build up until you won't see it as a scribble, it will just become a background. So you could use this in various ways for backgrounds behind things, textures on objects, depends entirely on what it is that you're drawing. So we've got blending colours. Now for instance, it's just like mixing colour, uh, say watercolours. If I needed to make a selection of greens, I can put a blue down. This is a very pale blue, something similar to cerulean blue, if you're working in watercolour. And then I can put a light uh, yellow on top, so something a bit like lemon yellow. And when I mix those two together, I begin to get light green shades. I've, obviously if I want a deeper blue, I can then, oh, deeper green I should say, I can then bring in a stronger blue on top, go back over the top with my yellow and just alternate until I get the shade of green that I require. So nice and pale there. If I wanted a deeper green, I'll go in with darker blue. So this is like a, a cobalt. And then if I put a, a stronger yellow, almost like a cadmium yellow, I'm mixing a darker green. So that's apart from any greens that you might have in your set. But if you're, you're only using something like 12 colour pencils or 24 colour pencils, you can create a much bigger range of colours by blending on the paper, mixing your colours on the paper, just as you would if you were working in watercolour. Okay, we're going to start working on the drawing and as you can see, I've got my butterfly sketched up very lightly in normal pencil. Um, so I've used just a 2B pencil, I've got the flower sketched out that I'm going to uh, eventually paint. I will put background in, but I'm going to concentrate on the butterfly first. Butterfly to begin with, then we'll move on to the flower and the last thing I'm going to put in is an impression of some background to set the butterfly and flower off. What I would also suggest that you do is have a spare piece of paper, kitchen paper would be fine, to cover your pencil drawing um, so that you don't smudge your work. You, you can't really smudge coloured pencil too much, but you can make it go slightly fuzzy. So I'm going to cover that as I, as I work. Um, so my pencil outline's been done, and as with, coloured, uh, with watercolour, you work from light to dark. So I'm beginning, I've got a selection of colours that I'm going to work with and you always begin with your lightest colours first. So I'm starting with my yellows. The, um, it doesn't matter if you can go over, if your butterfly has got areas of black on it, that will not matter because the black goes on last, exactly the same as in watercolour. So I'm going to start by putting pale yellow down and then blend other colours in. I haven't got the right colours in my box, so we mix the colours, but we mix them on the paper. So the only areas that I have to actually completely try to avoid as any areas of white, and that will be the uh, paper itself, left the paper itself. So I'm just beginning to introduce a little bit of yellow, pink, and then I'll move on to some orange, and build it up, work gently, light to dark, just avoiding the areas of white. Now, my butterfly at this point doesn't have any fine areas of white paper. So I don't need at this moment in time to use the indenting technique, but you may need to if you've got a slightly 
uh, if you're working on a different butterfly, you may need to indent fine white lines at this stage. But I'm just building up my oranges. Don't go in too heavy as you're building your colours up, your layers of colour, because what will happen is if you go in too strongly, you'll find that the colour just skates about on the surface of the paper and you can't build up layers. So just build it up gently. My other big tip is don't draw your butterfly up too large because coloured pencil takes a while and if you go in on too big a scale, you will get bored. Um, so be um, not tiny, but just don't draw it up too on too large a scale. So at the moment, I'm just building up my oranges. You can see it's quite fast to build up the pattern. It doesn't matter that I'm going over the edges of my lines because the markings on the butterfly are darker. And the good thing about coloured pencil is if you want to bring the light to the oranges up brighter, add yellow over the top so I can layer with yellow and mix my oranges because they're not looking bright enough on the paper. I can make them brighter by putting yellow on top of them. So I will continue to layer up oranges until I'm happy. In fact, I need to go a little bit more red into parts of this and introduce some red, just gently, but it will bring the colour out. At the moment I'm using the point of the pencil. It doesn't matter which makes of pencil you've got. You might have got some water-soluble coloured pencil. You can use those and simply use them like a normal coloured pencil. So don't think that they, you have to add water. Just use them as a normal coloured pencil. And to be honest, if you've got some of those and some other colours, just mix them together. Don't be too precious about it. But the more interesting, the more sort of colours you blend together, the more interesting your end result will be. So I keep going back from yellow to orange to red to get variation in my colours. And I will do all of these palest colours across the whole of the butterfly first before I start working on anything else. So again, moving down onto this wing, I put some light yellow down first with the flat side. I've just left a little band of white because there are white markings on my butterfly. If you make a mistake, you can use a putty rubber and it will take off. So say I didn't want, I'd come down too far, I can take my putty rubber and I can lift colour back with the putty rubber and it will get most of your colour off unless you've gone in really, really heavy. Now, if I can actually leave my white markings and leave a space for them, but if your butterfly has got some tiny, tiny um, markings on it, then you might want to go in and use your indenting tool to indent first before you bring the colour over, otherwise you might forget. You can obviously uh, use the indenting tool if you've got pale yellow or light pink or pale blue, or whatever like that, so you put the palest colour down first, then indent with the indenting tool. Now, most of you probably won't have an indenting tool like this. If you've got a knitting needle, crochet needle, you probably haven't got those either, so a biro that's run out. If you use a biro that's run out, that can be just as good as an indenting tool. You want something that's got a dull point to it. I'm at the stage now where I have uh, put most of the basic yellows and oranges down. I've also been using some bright pinks. So the colours I've worked with are mainly sort of lemon yellow, uh, equivalent to a cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and I've used sort of a, a pink, a bit like a permanent rose, and then an orange, a light orange. Um, what I've started doing now is the equivalent of an umber underneath all the areas where the black is going to go or the dark is going to go. So um, I'm starting to go along 
and work short lines. The dark colour is going to sit over the top of this, but this gives an under sort of lying equivalent of a wash, I suppose, over the top. All my marks are also going in the direction that describes the angle of the wings. I have done a little bit of indenting as well um, to avoid some fine light lines which are just beginning to emerge but they will come out much more strongly later on when I go in darker. Um, so I'm just building up and I know this isn't anywhere near as dark as it will need to be but it just gives a little bit of um, depth and using the black just on its own can be quite dangerous it can flatten everything out and you can lose all the depth from what you're doing so um, I'm going to build up a number of colors and not use black on its own so this is something quite similar to an umber light a light brown really so that gives me quite a good base color there and I've put a pale yellow down um, on this part sort of closer to the butterfly's body um, and now I'm just going to bring a little bit of that umber in on top of that. Now if you want to get the speckling effect of um, almost like the iridescence, the light catching on, then you could use your indenting tool and you could just indent some tiny spots into that pale area with the indenting tool. Just put enough pressure on to dip into the paper. And it then means when we start bringing darker colors over the top, you will see little speckles of the paler yellow coming through. The more that you do, the more it will come out. But you do have to put a reasonable amount of pressure behind it. It depends how much detail you want in the end drawing. So I'm just going to start building up with those darker tones. And all my marks are fairly short going in the direction that I want the wings to flow. The area I'm going to concentrate on next is the body of the butterfly um, and it's got these almost like little stripes so very lightly with my umber pencil I'm going to sketch where I want those stripes to go. If we put too much pencil work, lead pencil down at the very start of this uh, drawing because we're using some areas of quite pale colour that will actually get picked up and dirty your colours. So don't go too mad with the amount of um, pencil work you put down. Keep it as light as you possibly can because uh, you will get a very grubby look to the coloured pencil if you don't. So I'll use that umber to begin to draw those sections in. So I've got the curve on the butterfly's body and then I'm just going to move up a little bit to the second part and it's sort of slightly hairy and begins to get darker so I'm going to bring some of that uh, up a little bit heavier there we go more pressure behind the pencil and start to build those marks up it's all about textures trying to get interesting textures in with the pencil I can now introduce a little bit more of that uh, sort of like a deeper, almost terracotta colour, like a burnt sienna, and start bringing some of that into the front part here. I keep stopping to sharpen the pencil, it's really important otherwise you will get that foggy finish to your drawing. And the best pencil sharpeners to use are pastel pencil sharpeners. I like this Derwent one. It's not very expensive at all, but it gives a really good sharp point to what you're doing. That terracotta colour 
I'm also going to use down on the body, the lower part of the body here, begin to introduce some of that and this time sweeping the marks of the other way, slightly hairier, so using the tip of the pencil, a bit more pressure behind it and bring that colour in around here, fanning it out. It's up to you how detailed you want to be with this. You can add loads of fine detail in, or you can have a much more sketchy approach and it's entirely up to you how you want to do this, but just build your colour up with different pressure behind the pencil, mixing your colours on the paper. And we're nearly ready to move on to working with the darks. Um, hopefully you can see that I have now worked up the darks on the right hand side. Um, underneath, the black's the top layer, but underneath that I've put some very dark brown and then black on top. Uh, I've also gone around and uh, brightened with some yellow, some areas of the orange, but basically the, the black is the last layer that's going that's gone on top. So I thought what I would do is I would show you on parts of this uh, left hand wing what I've done over here. So I'm going to cover this section so that I don't um, blur it at all and start building up. First with the very dark brown. Pencils again, nice and sharp and I've been building up with short marks so you should be able to see that the brown goes down first. I know it may sound strange but if you put the another colour down, if you put black straight down you won't get such a rich colour as if you put mix other colours with it first. So in this instance I'm using brown, but depending upon what butterfly you might be doing, um, you know, you could put a very dark blue down or a very deep green down um, and then work the black on top. And that way you will get a much, much richer colour. So I won't do the entire wing for you in this demo but I will show you a portion of what I've been doing. So still avoiding those areas that I want to remain white, that will be the white of the paper. There's no point in thinking that your white pencil will get these areas back, it won't, it's not, it's not strong enough. The white will give you a sort of a smoky look to a colour but you'll never get back to the white of the paper again. So you must remember that any areas that you want to remain absolutely white need to be the paper white. And if you've got any tiny tricky areas, like these little bits of highlight that I've got here, I have indented, so tiny bits of small areas of light will show through as I come down over the top. So I'm just going to do this small area, coming in with the dark brown, and then building up on top and again taking my marks down the page so now I can come back on top with my black and if there you want a little bit of variation so there are some areas on the wings where I can see that it's more brown than black so I can then allow that brown to be revealed so I don't have to obliterate it all but if I build it up in short marks, I've got control. You may have to do this a few times, depending on how hard you're able to press. I don't want to press so hard that I end up with a shine on the surface. If that does happen, take your putty rubber and you can actually rub a layer off um, and then reapply the colour if you've pressed too hard and find that your colours are just skating about on the top. So you can begin to see that happening. I'll go back to my brown again here and just start to introduce some more brown. And then again back to black. 
sharpen up the shapes as I go. Some areas you want to have a slightly ragged edge and other areas you want a crisper edge. Basically, that's the way that I built up the rest of the wing. What I have also done on this area here, I'll just show you, is to take a little bit of light blue and on the white areas of the wing down here, not leave them absolutely pure white, but a little bit of pale blue here and there, just to give a little impression of some shapes and crinkling in the wings. A very, very light pale blue here and there. The other area that I have been working on is the body of the uh, butterfly and again different sort of mark making there. I have been starting to use a very sharp black and speckle to begin to form the texture on the body. Going round in that curve because I do want to retain the shape, the segments of the butterfly's body. So rather than shading, I've been stippling with the very tip, the very point of the pencil. Different strengths depending upon how dark you want it to be, following the contour around and building those sections up, but leaving a little band of yellow to show the segments. And if I do it lightly first, and then I can always go back and go in darker in some sections, but hopefully you'll begin to see the segments start to develop. But I'll carry on working on that. I'll also do the uh, of uh, the um, antenna here as well, so I can put the dark part on the antenna. But if you've got any little highlight, because I am going to bring a background colour in, I can go back to my indenting tool and indent. Probably not a solid line, but some little bits and pieces so that when I come over the antenna, I have a very fine highlight. So I'll carry on working on the body of the butterfly, build up both wings on both sides and then tackle the background and the flower. Um, now I've more or less finished the butterfly itself I'm going to start putting it in a setting so uh, getting some of the background up here into position so I must cover what I've been working on and this time I'm going to use a selection of yellows and greens from the box I'm going to be using the flat side of the pencil. Again, always start with your lightest colour first and I'm going to be shading away from the butterfly. So if I use the flat side very low to the paper and I can shade away from the butterfly. If you want to turn your paper to help, that's absolutely fine. My intention is just to do a loose edge, a vignette, a loose edged um, background, so I'm not going to run to the edges of the paper, but I'm going to build my colours up slowly, blending from one green to the next, just to give an impression of some out of focus green behind the butterfly. Um, I'm not going to put any detail into this at all. So that's my lightest um, colour first, and I'll just demonstrate a small patch. So lightest green, then moving up to the next green and again if I use the flat side of the pencil nice and sharp and shade away from the butterfly. And we will just keep on building up the colour until you get the effect that you're after. It doesn't have to be as per the photograph just some attractive colours behind it that please you. It can look quite good to have areas, if your butterfly has light wings, to actually contrast that with deeper. Green works very well because if the butterfly is a hot colour, 
cool greens sit nicely behind it and I can put in varying shades of green. So what we want to do is we want to shade away at different angles so we're in effect cross hatching and that way we'll bleed from one colour to the next and you won't get lots of scratchy lines. So I'm going to change the angle of my shading all the time. And then I might come back in with the yellow on top. That overlaps. And then you can take blues and shade with blues on top to mix greens. So if I come in with something that's a little like a cobalt blue, I can start darkening the green by shading that away. Don't forget I have indented where the uh, antenna goes so I don't have to worry about shading around that. So we're fading from one colour to another and we can just fade off the outside edge. Take you a little bit of the time to do that, but I'll do that all the way round here and around the white flower as well. Having said that, you don't have to have the flower white, you can make that flower whatever colour you like, but the important thing will actually eventually be the shadow underneath the butterfly which will anchor it down onto the flower. So I'm going to be working some uh, greys and cream tones into that. As you can see, I have uh, developed the colour around behind the flower and the butterfly uh, with two shades of, of um, green, a very light yellowy green and then a slightly deeper green. I may well, uh, towards the end of this, go even darker still, but that's put a sort of a foil of colour around the butterfly and the flower. And what I've started to do is look at the areas of shadow um, being cast by the butterfly on the flower and I'm beginning to use um, a grey and a blue to get those together. So I've got these two colours here which I've been using, grey and blue, to start getting the depth of shadow. I've also used a little bit of uh, a, a creamy colour, something like a, a yellow ochre maybe, very lightly to give a, a small amount of uh, creamy colour to the flower so that some of the petals are going to stay white and some are going to be this very pale off-white. So again, gently introducing little hints of colour into the flowers but not everywhere. These big flowers at the front will have mostly uh, white petals with some grey shadows. So that's what I've been doing so far and I'm using uh, pale blue to begin to get some shadow to start developing on some of these petals, so very very lightly. Getting hints of light shadow on some of these petals, but not losing all of the white. And you can go as far as you want to with this, you can do the flowers in a lot of detail. You don't have to keep the flowers white, you can make them any colour that you that you wish. Um, you can make the background around the butterfly much darker, in fact it would probably look really nice if you did that. Um, you can embellish it as much as you want. The flower, the white flower here has got to have lots of dark areas which I will put into, to give it a little bit of depth I'll go in, press a lot harder with my grey and just get some uh, little sections which are going to have give it some depth but it'll take me a while to do that. You can put in as much detail as you choose but just think about the pressure that you're putting behind the pencil as to how strong you want the tones to be. These little dark bits will begin to give depth to the flower. 
I might even put a little hint of dark green in amongst these later. It can be very much of an impression, you don't have to go into nearly as much detail as this. You can do very much of an impression with the flowers, totally up to you. really a question of looking at all the tonal values and shading in the direction which best describes the way you want the petal to fall. Gradually a bit of depth will begin to emerge. Keep on building this up. Some of these greys do need a little bit of green coming through. So I can work some greens in. And later I will build the background up a bit more. But do have a go at a butterfly on a flower. It doesn't have to be this one, anything you like, exotic or uh, native to this country, um, and you can put in as much detail to the flower as you wish. <laughs> 